and welcome to Micro Histories. I'm your host, Jason Bischoff Horstel for the New Haven Museum. Today, we're standing in the heart of one of New Haven's oldest commercial districts, Broadway. And today, looking around, it's not just all about holiday shopping. It's always been a diversified area of shopping leading back to nearly the founding of New Haven, and especially since the post-revolution time in 1784 to be exact, when the city council deemed the area Broadway, leading from Josiah Bird's house, which would have been at the corner of York and Elm, and designated that as such to the roads leading to Amity and Mount Carmel, meaning this is the connecting place. This is the crossroads from which the surrounding towns and villages came and interacted with New Haven. So join me as I take us on a quick, brief look at some of Broadway's illustrious past. In the days that Broadway was a wet goods and dry goods central district, this spot that we're standing on, which was at the time called Lower Green, was the approximate area where the hay scales were, which meant that farmers would bring in their hay because if you stop and think about it, horses need fuel just like cars do, and horses were the primary mode of transportation until the early 20th century here in New Haven. Their fuel was brought in, weighed here, practically where I'm standing, and then the trade and money uh, would be passed on to the farmers. And before returning on the long trips, sometimes to their outer villages and towns surrounding New Haven and up the, the valley, they would go amongst the diverse shops here that were located further up, rather than having to go all the way to Long Wharf down by the harbor. And they would buy what they needed to return home, supplies both for farming, but also just general living. A center place where everyone passed through and all news was, was carried on and everybody knew what was going on was behind me on the, on the grounds of the Christ Church. And that was the original Broadway Hotel, a classic New England tavern hotel in roadside scenario, kind of a roadhouse, if you will. Behind me stands the Soldiers and Sailors Monument that was erected in 1906. 41 years after the Civil War, commemorating an extensive battle there. And here is more of a, although condoned by the New Haven Parks Commission, uh, DIY war monument of sorts. And this, this pile of stones represents a stone for every month since the conflicts in Afghanistan and Iraq began in 2001. And on each stone, it's marked the uh, deaths of each month. And despite our withdrawal of troops in uh, earlier this year, there's still conflict related to these wars. And it stands in an interesting uh, contrast to the other war memorial here. Located right behind my shoulder here was Reverend Merwin's house. Why is that significant? Because in the British invasion of July 4th, 1779, it is said on this high ground, which if you didn't realize, Broadway is one of the highest points of downtown New Haven in elevation. It was on this high ground that the British were repelled back from their intended invasion of downtown New Haven. Bet you didn't know that. By the early 20th century, Broadway was transforming from strictly a dry goods district to more of an educational basis. And with Yale's expansion and the local high school complex just around the corner, the district was integrated in different form. Behind me was a landmark along Southern Buildings, Whitlock's Bookstore, which had moved here from its original location on High Street across from Skull and Bones. Originally a used bookstore, it became uh, an, a landmark bookstore oriented towards these educational purposes. In a tragic fire on December 23rd, 1943, this entire corner burned down. 
which then led to one Broadway being designed and built after 1943 and has had a colorful history all throughout as the town gown battle of Broadway continued throughout the 20th century. In 1994, with the closing of Demery's and the placement of Aubon Pond, Yale began to shift Broadway over to what is called now the Shops at Yale. But New Haveners know this area as Broadway and know this has always been a mixed district where town and gown can play, purchase things, and have a cold drink. So for the New Haven Museum, I'm your host, Jason bischoff Forstel. This is Micro Histories. Tell us what you think in the comments below and tell us what you think you'd like to see in 2022. I know we'll be back here at Broadway because there's a lot more to tell. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next year.